what's called a bare root strawberry plant and that's typically how we get them and they're wrapped like I said about a thousand per box and so when you get a bare root uh, plant um, this is what you're getting now it doesn't look like much but man give it two or three or four weeks and that thing's gonna be uh, but leafing out and it's just gonna be a beautiful plant so that's got a little bit of greenery on top do you ever get any that are like known duds that you can just tell we do duds? yeah we do like there's one right there i mean you've got a little bit right here on your off your crown that's your uh your leaf coming up off there and so you got that one there so that one might be that one's still okay or that one's uh -huh. a dud? yeah still okay yep this one looks like a dud somebody probably chucked that one out but if you dig just a little deeper and you don't want to disrupt their growing pattern then you can see that you've got some some growth there as well. Oh, so that one still could work. Uh huh. You bet. And so, if you can find them through Bear Root, which Norse Farms in Massachusetts sells them, Lassen, NorCal, um, and you can buy 25 at a time from Norse. That's why I like going there sometimes because I may need only 150 to 200 plants. What what's the variety we plant in Utah? Well, um, I've been growing strawberries now for about 20 years, and I've gone from Quinault to uh, Fort Laramie, to uh, Shasta. I mean, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of varieties out there, but in the last 15 years, I've gone to Seascape. And I like Seascape because it's an ever-bearing or a day-neutral strawberry, which means that it will produce from about June 1st, depending on the weather, all the way to first frost. It lets up a little bit in the, in the summer, around July, August, because it gets too hot. And so now the plants are just trying to hunker down and preserve some energy to help get them through the heat. Um, you don't necessarily need to water them more because they're hot, but it's just that they start they just start dropping back, back production. And then once end of August, first of September hits, you have just the most amazing crop in the fall. You know, Albion, between Albion and Seascape, I like them both. Albion's a lot firmer, if I could use that word and um, it's more conical in shape like a, a funnel with the round on the top seascape is more of a wedge shaped strawberry as far as the size they're about the same as far as size sweetness wise um, i like seascape i like chomping into a softer sweeter strawberry than i do a firmer sweet strawberry it's just it's just one of those things that just hits your taste buds. So if you're one that wants strawberries all year long, go for the, the Everbears, the, sea, the, the Seascape or the Albion. In Utah, um, our climate is such that we kind of turn our strawberries into perennials. Now, that doesn't mean we just plant them, forget them, and they'll keep coming back. They'll keep coming back every year, but they don't provide the bigger berry that everybody likes. Um, California, Florida, Mexico, Washington, all those states that grow strawberries to sell in the markets, um, they'll treat their strawberry plants as an annual because they go for that one hurrah, that big berry that you find in the store that's always white in the center, right? You and I as a, as a homeowner, we're growing a strawberry patch, we'll leave them in for probably three or four years and then we'll take them out. Because once the strawberry starts to get three and four years old and up, then the, the berry size diminishes. They might still be sweet, but the size diminishes and then you start getting little tiny ones. So I always recommend replanting them every three to four years. Um, you can use the same soil. Um, and so you don't have to do a whole lot of work. Just kind of prep your soil in that three or four years, just like you were going to plant them, like, like we're planting them this year. Well, this soil is, uh, again, it's 50% top soil it has a little bit of sand in it it's got 30% uh, mulch which is your your bark your mountain bark material and uh, other types of material that you get um, from your compost piles um, and then we've got about 20% of our uh, our different uh, organic matter which is our our chopped up leaves we've got some rotted hay in here um, we, we actually incorporated some of the uh, the mushroom um, compost which is a soil that mushrooms are grown in and then we also uh, put about a, a two pound bag of uh, worm castings in here to help with a little bit more nutrition so the soil it's it's nice 
you know, obviously it's a little damp underneath. You can tell the difference from the top to the bottom, but that's the way you want it right there. It's got some good wood chips in it for aeration. Um, it's got a little bit of sand. Obviously the sand's not going to hold water, but the other organic matter and some of the compost materials are going to hold the water so that uh, when it does get dry on the top, your roots are down there in the bottom where it needs it. Uh, put the water down there, okay? Now, as far as planting, you know, we've got these bare root, right? And so you're wondering, well, okay, so what do I need to do? And, and, and so what I like to tell people is, the first thing I like to do is I'm going to count how many berries I'm going to, I'm going to plant. Okay, I'm going to order 25. I want to plant 25. And then what I do is I'll take those, and, and they've come shipped through a, a packing, uh, you know, through packing, shipping, and they're going to be kind of dry. And so what I like to tell people is to take some, some scissors, or uh, where we work we call them skizzers, and then I'm just going to cut about two or three inches of the bottom of the roots off, okay? The reason I do that is it's going to open up all the ends of these roots. And when I put that in a bowl of water, a bucket of water, it allows that to, to uptake the water so that when I plant them out in my soil, they're not going to go through as much of a stress, uh, period. And also, if you add a little bit of miracle Grow into your, into your bucket of water, that helps to uptake some of the nutrients in there and, and gives them a little bit better boost as well. Um, and then what I like to do is make sure that my soil is kind of wet because I hate to plant a, a, a dry root in a dry bed. That's like you going up and sticking your dry lips in dry sand and hoping you're going to get some water and you ain't going to do it. <laughs> so I've got all my plants right here that I'm going to plant most likely in this box and I'll just kind of stick it there in this grow box. And I use a ruler. You know, it can be a wooden one, can be a plastic one, can be a tape measure, whatever you want to do. Um, I go with the uh, SAE, right? The inches and not the metric. It just, this confuses me. <laughs> I go by the inches. And so when I'm doing three rows of strawberries in a box, I do my outside row about seven inches from the edge of the box. And then I'll just center my middle row because eventually these things are going to grow together. They're going to send off their little their runners and they're going to root up and they're going to provide berries for you too. So it'll just fill in this box really nice and then we'll have three or four times the, the strawberry plants in this box after a couple of years. And so what I do is I'll take and just plant my first one kind of based upon where my water system is. This is my header and we'll use some drip tape. We'll talk about that in another segment but this is my header where my water comes in. And then uh, I, I try to just, just measure out here seven inches and then I just take my hole and just plant that in there. Now, very important uh, thing to remember is on your plant, um, we, we have what's called our roots, right? And then we have the crown. You got a really bigger plant, you've got a smaller plant, but right here, this is your crown. You got your root system right under your crown. And then over time, two or three or so years, you're going to end up with uh, maybe three or four crowns in each uh, plant, which is going to send out more shoots with more berries on it. So the more crowns you have, the more berries you're going to get out of that, that, that plant. And that happens over a two or three year period. Now, this one's a little bit bigger of a plant, okay? Just a little bit more mature, probably had a little bit better growing condition than this little scrawny one did. And your crown is the same. It's just all starts right there at the top of your at the top of your root system, right there. Okay. Now it's again, it's best to make sure that you don't uh, bury the crown, and it's best to make sure that you have the uh, the uh, roots covered too. Now I like to bury or plant them 12 inches apart. That's the standard that everybody recommends to plant your strawberries at least 12 inches apart. That way it allows air. It allows the sunlight to get into when your plants start to grow. It allows that air and sunlight to get in there so that it can hit your blossoms and help your berries uh, mature. They, they're a lot sweeter when they get more uh, when they get more sunlight. And then the air helps to just uh, take away any stagnant moisture or anything that gets on them, and it helps to prevent any diseases that might get on your leaves on your strawberry plants. So, so here's 12 inches. I take that right there. I'm making mark right there. And then I come here and I've got seven inches, so I'm just going to dig my fingers in there. And then I'm just going to take and take that, the roots, and put them down in there. And then, like I said, you want to try to have that so that the crown's just visible right there. Okay? We'll go down here. We'll take another one here, put our ruler there. There's our 12 inches. Here's our seven inches. This soil is so nice. It's so soft compared to your ground soil 
uh, because the way it's made and the component that's in it, it's a lot nicer on your fingers, your hands when you're trying to transplant because it's easy to dig into and it's soft. Okay, we'll plant a few more here for us here. Here's our ruler again at 12 inches. Come out here, there's seven inches right there. Now, if you feel like you want to plant more plants, you have a little bit smaller area and you want to plant a few more plants than spacing them 12 inches apart, I would go any lower than maybe eight inches apart, okay? Because again, you want that air, you want the sunlight to get into your plants so that it helps them to grow and eliminate uh, very many diseases that they want to get in there, okay? Take it like that, bring it around. Just don't have to pack it down really hard. You just, um, just kind of pack it in like that. And then when I get done planting this box, we'll, uh, we'll water them in. I like to just give them one drink of water just to help them get a little kickstart on that one. I won't fertilize them for a couple of weeks because your, your small plants, your, your, your plants have tender feeder roots, what are called feeder roots that are reaching out, getting all the, the nutrition and, and all that from the soil. And if you start throwing fertilizers in there, it has a chance of uh, burning those little feeder roots and then your plant suffers and it makes it a little bit harder for it to, uh, to take off. 12 inches, seven inches. You know, if you're symmetrical like me, you like to kind of have a neat little garden. And so I always, I'm not OCD or anything, but I still like to have a neat little organized garden and have it look nice. Even though over time, these little babies are gonna, they're going to uh, grow together and you won't even know where I, I planted them in the row, so. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, long in a 16 long box. That gives you about six to eight inches on each side. We'll do the same in the middle. In the middle, I'll stagger them. Um, so let me uh, lay some of these out here just to kind of match up with the ones that are across from me here. The other one, I'm just gonna go off about six inches and I'm gonna put these in the center of the outside rows and that just gives up that more air capacity to, to, to blow in and out of the plants and then also to have the uh, sunshine growing in and out of the in and out of the plants as well again I'm gonna kind of come across here but I'm gonna put my seven inches there put that in there like that and go like this put those in there Try to keep your root. When I water them in, it will wash some of the soil off of the, the crown so that it will make it so that the crown is, it looks like I might be burying them a little deep, but when I water them in, it does a really good job of washing that, uh, that soil down the crown so it doesn't look like they're gonna suffocate on us. We've got one of our friendly little weeds in there. I can just grab that thing and Pull it straight up and then I've got the whole root system there. Chuck that baby out. So when you're when you're growing in a garden box like this or raised beds, the thing you don't want to do is you don't want to step in your beds because you're going to start compacting your soil and it's going to be just like your ground soil. So stay out of your beds. So we talk about flat ground at home. You know, if you don't have the capability or the, the resources to uh, have grow boxes and you want to just plant in the ground, uh, then what I recommend is, is making like a little mound, probably about six, eight inches tall, something so you're gonna bring your soil up. And you can do that with a hoe or a shovel. I'm just kind of showing you what I'm talking about here in my grow box and I'll flatten this all back out. But if I can have a nice mound like this, then what, I, what happens is, is when the water waters it, it's, it uh, percolates down through and could end up here in your, in your row or next to your uh, mound there. So when you plant your strawberry plants here, what's gonna happen is, is it's gonna provide that uh, area for your plants to be up here, your roots right inside here. They're gonna be up out of this area here, or even deeper where your water could puddle up because of our clay soils that we have here in Utah. Now, if you're like some people I know, you've got a, got a great soil because you've been working on it for years and years and years. But some of us that are just starting out with gardening, we aren't going to have the primo soil that all these old, old codgers have. Sorry, because I'm one too. So you just want to just want to kind of make a nice little mound with your soil in your garden, just to get your uh, your berries, your, your the root system up 
up and out of the water. You do that for your potatoes. You could do it for just about anything if you wanted. But uh, typically I just do it on my uh, potatoes and my, my strawberries. Okay. So we, we kind of stretch it, level this back out. You know, the best kind of therapy that you can get, especially in this crazy world with all the stuff going on with the coronavirus is get outside and get in the soil and just breathe it up through your nostrils. It's just amazing medicine. Okay, now for my center, for my center um, planting here, I'm gonna sporadically space them. They're still gonna be spaced 12 inches apart. And uh, let's see, there's that one. I'll put one there. I've got one right here, and I've got one there and there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw me an imaginary line. How's that sound? It's not actually gonna be in the center, but close enough, because remember, these bad boys are gonna grow together anyway, right? And then what I do is just come in here and do the same thing. I don't really have to measure with my tape measure because I've got my line where I wanna be. But I just want to look at where my 12 inches here, 12 inches there, and I just want to poke it right in the middle and put it on my line and voila. Come here and do the same thing. And just keep on going down the line. Now if you planted 30,000 strawberry plants like I have over the years, you just almost just I'm second nature like riding a bike. <laughs> As I say, it's pretty obvious this is not your first time doing this. What did John Wayne say? It's not my first rodeo, Pilgrim. <laughs> okay. And that's it for now. Let me go get the hose. You know, this is evidence that these things work. What's amazing is he's got these hanging. I don't know if you can see that down at the far right. All right. So when you guys are going to water, if you've got the frost-free hydrant, I call it a farm spigot, um, you've got a watering your breaker head from your wand that you're going to water everything with. you got your shutoff valve here. The water siphons back down into the ground. That's why they call it a frost-free spigot, because the water siphons out it doesn't stay here when it gets really cold it freezes and cracks your pipe so if you're using a wand or a, a head like this you want to make sure that when you turn this on that you take and open your hose and let that air blow through because if you don't when this surges because your water's coming up and it's got air pockets in there it blows the tip of this off and then this is shot and you've just blown about 10 or 12 bucks Okay, so it seems like it's ready to go up. Oh. Okay, you got a little bit of air still left in there. Okay, I'm pretty good. I'll screw this on. And I use a wand, but I don't have one out here in the garden. And this works just fine, just spraying it or putting it right next to your shutoff valve right here. My water's still on. I just gently turn it on just to let just that much more air out and then I can manipulate my shower. Kind of like that, right? So what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna take and water these little guys in. I'm gonna kinda go like this and just kinda water it down. I like to go over it probably about four or five times because it allows that moisture to, to uh, percolate down through the soil here in the, in the grow box. And then I know I've got sufficient water uh, moisture for the plants to uh, let the roots start digging down into the soil to find them. Okay, you want to water deep enough so that your roots aren't sh staying shallow on the surface. Because when it starts getting hot in the summer, uh, your plants aren't digging deep to get the water, then they're going to struggle. Just finish watering your whole box. Take your time because you know you're out here in nature. You don't have anything you got to rush into the house or go do anything. Just take your time out here and enjoy the, the moment you have. Because that's really what uh, it's all about. At least I, I like that. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll finish here. 
and then I can come back down again and I'll go over it probably one more time just to make sure I've got plenty of moisture down there for these plants to get a good good head start now obviously we're at the first of April here in Utah and so it's a uh, it's still a little bit chilly. We've had snow up in the mountains just the last few nights. Last night we had a 28 degree temperature reading here in the garden. Um, so it was still a little bit nippy here last night here in Utah. Eventually what's gonna happen is, is with our watering system, we're gonna have a little tube. I call it a spaghetti tube and we'll get into the watering setup here uh, next, next segment. But we're gonna use what's called a tea tape or drip tape that will go along each line of our plants so it's only going to water where the plants are. Mm -hmm. 